Goldilocks and the Three Bears from Revolting Rhymes written by Roald Dahl This famous wicked little tale should never have been put on sale. It is a mystery to me why loving parents cannot see that this is actually a book about a brazen little crook. Had I the chance, I wouldn't fail to clap young Goldilocks in jail. Now just imagine how you'd feel if you had cooked a lovely meal. Delicious porridge, steaming hot, fresh coffee in the coffee pot. With maybe toast and marmalade, the table beautifully laid. One place for you and one for Dad. Another for your little lad. Then Dad cries, golly gosh, gee whiz. Oh cripes, how hot this porridge is. Let's take a walk along the street until it's cool enough to eat. He adds, an early morning stroll is good for people on the whole. It makes your appetite improve. It also helps your bowels to move. No proper wife would dare to question such a sensible suggestion. Above all, not at breakfast time, when men were seldom at their prime. No sooner are you down the road than Goldilocks, that little toad, that nosy, thieving little louse, comes sneaking in your empty house. She looks around, she quickly notes three bowls brimful of porridge oats. And while still standing on her feet, she grabs a spoon and starts to eat. I say again, how would you feel if you had made this lovely meal? And some delinquent little tot broke in and gobbled up the lot. But wait, that's not the worst of it. Now comes the most distressing bit. You are, of course, a house-proud wife, and all your happy married life you have collected lovely things like gilded cherubs wearing wings and furniture by Chippendale bought at some famous auction sale. But your most special valued treasure, the peace that gives you endless pleasure is one small children's dining chair Elizabethan very rare it is in fact your joy and pride passed down to you on grandma's side but Goldilocks like many freaks does not appreciate antiques she doesn't care she doesn't mind and now she plonks her fat behind upon this dainty precious chair and crunch, it busts beyond repair. A nice girl would at once exclaim, Oh dear, oh heavens, what a shame. Not Goldie, she begins to swear. She bellows, what a lousy chair, and uses one disgusting word that luckily you've never heard. I dare not write it, even hint it. Nobody would ever print it. You'd think by now this little skunk would have the sense to do a bunk. But no, I very much regret. She hasn't nearly finished yet. Deciding she would like a rest, she says, let's see which bed is best. Upstairs she goes and tries all three. Here comes the next catastrophe. Most educated people choose to rid themselves of socks and shoes before they clamber into bed, but Goldie didn't give a shred. Her filthy shoes were thick with grime and mud and mush and slush and slime. Worse still, upon the heel of one was something that her dog had done. I say once more, what would you think if all this horrid dirt and stink was smeared upon your eider down by this revolting little clown? The famous story has no clues to show the girl removed her shoes. Oh, what a tale of crime on crime. Let's check it for a second time. Crime one, the prosecution's case. She breaks and enters someone's place. Crime two, the prosecutor notes. She steals a bowl of porridge oats. Crime three, she breaks her precious chair belonging to the baby bear. Crime four. She smears each spotless sheet with filthy messes from her feet. A judge would say without a blink, 10 years hard labour, 
in the clink. But in the book, as you will see, the little beast gets off scot-free. While tiny children near and far shout, goody good, hooray, hurrah. Poor darling Goldilocks, they say. Thank goodness that she got away. Myself, I think I'd rather send young Goldie to a sticky end. Oh, Daddy, cried the baby bear, my porridge gone, it isn't fair. Then go upstairs, the big bear said. Your porridge is upon the bed. But as it's inside, Mademoiselle, you'll have to eat her up as well. The End Story Vision